Okay, so as you can see here, the first step is to have everything set out. I've got the figures that I'm using in this specific comic. I've got a couple extra figures on standby. I've got my basic white cardboard with some lights. I've got the background for the specific panel that I'm going to be making. I've got the two figures I'm going to be putting right now in the panel. I'm going to try to organize them and see what kind of poses we can do. I've got my camera, of course, basic scripts. And so what I do with these lights, right, is uh, this is the normal configuration I do when I do you know, studio pictures, types of things like that. It's not really a studio, but you get the idea. But since, for example, the background, you see the lights coming from here, I'm going to make it so that these lights kind of have that effect. So let's say I put them kind of like this, and then maybe do something from here, and then have it from the back. I don't know exactly, and of course I can also change intensity, Want to make it less bright, uh, but that's with the lights. Now, a couple other things I do when I'm working with figures, sometimes it's difficult to pose them, so I'll use the sticky tack, and that helps. And another thing is, for example, when I have lights, I will put a little piece of plastic that is very difficult to do with one hand, and it somewhat changes the color, right? Um, let me put that a little closer. There you go. Okay. So, you know, if you have enough lights and enough colors, it, it does look interesting. But I'm not doing that with comics right now because that makes it a little more difficult to crop the figures later, which I'll be showing you. So my next step is fairly basic but very important. I put the figures out uh, to have an idea of I'm going to visualize the poses and kind of see what angle would be best to take them from. For example, with the background here and with uh, Optimus and Red Alert, these two characters, right, let's say Optimus is mm, talking to Red Alert, mentoring him, and so I'm looking at the pose and saying, okay, well this is how I'm going to do it. Then I'm going to take each figure and individually take pictures of them and then put them together in the comic. But I have to have an idea first of scale, and I have to have an idea of actually how I'm going to, you know, pose them in the comic. Okay, so now I have my camera out, and I'm ready to take pictures. Now, this is, I'm just doing this for the video, of course. Uh, I'm going to take some proper pictures here later. But, of course, I want to make sure I focus either on the head or the chest. That's the part that I want to be most in focus. And I'll just take a burst of photos. And even generally, if you have a low uh, shutter speed, let's say your shutter speed is uh, 130th or uh, 120th of a second, uh, if you take a burst of photos, at least with my camera, you'll generally get one that's at least sharp. So even if you take like 15 photos and 14 of them are out of focus, if the one photo is sharp, that's really all you need to worry about. Now, after I finish taking photos of all the figures that we're going to have in this panel, I go to the next step, which is take the SD card, put it in the computer, and edit the photos. Okay, so now that we're on our computer, we're going to go over and look at our photos. Now, for example, you see these are the same set, but these are better lighted, I guess you could say. So, let's see. This one, is this one sharp? You have to look for the, of course, the sharpness of the photo. Let's say all of these are fairly sharp. I'm going to go with 087 here at the end. So then, of course, we delete everything except for the one that we chose, blah, blah, blah. This one's pretty easy, but it can be time consuming, especially if you take, for example, 15 shots um, per character. And you've got to go through them all. Let's say, oh, 092, for example. Okay. So we don't select that. We delete the rest. Okay. So. Now that we've chosen the photos, we go into Photoshop. Now, this is the first picture that we're going to have. There's going to be four characters in total on this first panel. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to crop here so I don't have to deal with all the unnecessary stuff. Now we're going to create a new layer from background. And this is going to allow us to use this tool 
to delete the background. Now sometimes you may see, for example, if I delete now, it's going to delete part of the figure too, which we don't really want. So we're going to change our tolerance over here. Let's say let's change it to a 50. And now we have a better outline. So you're just going to have to play around sometimes with, uh, with the tolerances. And of course here there's still a little bit that it cropped, but that's no biggie. We can just use an erase tool. Some of this detail will be lost no matter what when we put filters on it to create our comic book look. So it doesn't really matter too much if the edges are perfect. Of course, if you're working in a different kind of project, uh, you would want the edges to be as good as possible. However, I'm not overly worried about that. Not only are we going to lose effects with the comic filters, but we are also going to be losing detail when we use the blur tool. So <laughs> we'll be actually losing a fair amount of detail, which is why the photos also need to be very sharp. Because if they're not, you're going to lose that detail when you transfer it over and it's not going to look good. Now as you can see here, I, I really don't have a choice here to delete because it will delete parts of the window, see, and we don't want that. We're going to grab our lasso tool, we're just going to make outlines here, don't have to worry about the curves too much because they are sentient robots so don't worry about it if you're working on something different let's say with people uh, that's gonna be a lot more difficult a lot trickier because you're actually gonna have to make it perfect okay so now let's see okay we have a little tiny little triangle there I want to get rid of and also this box here let's just make that a little smoother how about we and then we do this little triangle right here and you're going to have to do this for pretty much every photo. Maybe not the lasso tool if you're lucky, but the, definitely the layers from background. And that's also how you create any transparent PNG. And so there you go. That's how you make a transparent PNG in Photoshop. Fairly easy stuff, not going to lie. But you have to make sure you have the, same, the right color layout. That is true. So if you're going to make a transparent PNG, Bring up the brush here for a second, really quick. Erase tool. Let's see if we have any more little dots around that we need to get rid of. No, it looks like we're good. Okay, so one more trick. When you want to make the background, you need to make sure that when you go into image and you go in mode, it's an RGB color. You don't want it to be in a different channel because if it is, you're not going to be able to delete the background sometimes. If it's, for example, CMYK color, it's just not going to work. So let's go over to Save As and let's do PNG and let's just put it on the desktop. Okay. Now we're going to leave the original the way it is. We're not going to save the original like this. We are just going to click out and say no. Now this photo is different. Why is this photo different? It has a blue background. Now why did I put the blue plastic as a background? Because the figure is white and it mixes in with the background. So this is going to make it a lot easier, see, for me to de delete the background than if it would be if I had put a white background simply. Now you're going to see there's a little bit of a blue outline there and you're going to be like, well how the heck are you going to fix that? And it's actually fairly simple, and I'll show you here in a second once I'm done with the polygonal lasso tool once again. Well, we're going to go to hue saturation. Now the windows are blue there, but they're not going to be too bad. We're focusing on, on small parts here, and you'll see what's happening here. So we're going to bring down the saturation. And bring up the lightness. Now, you notice that most of our edges here are grayed out. Now that's a lot easier to blend into a gray background 
than blue is. Blue is going to stick out a lot more. So this gray edge right here, I don't really mind too much because, as I said, I'm just going to cut it out later. Now, if you are working, again, I'm going to say this again, if you're working in a professional setting, you don't want to have that. Uh, that's, that doesn't look good, but for what we're doing, it'll be just fine. So, again, save as a PNG, let's save it on desktop, okay. And then we continue with the rest of the photos. Alright, so, now we've done that, so we have our PNGs now. Here are our four PNGs. But now we need a background to put this on, right? So, let's go over to our backgrounds here. Now let's just scroll down, and let's go to this one. This is the one I was thinking of, okay? So here we have our background. Now, how are we gonna put these guys on there? Well, first let's select the one that goes farthest in the back. Let's pick here, strong arm. I don't wanna do, I don't wanna change the style, but we are going to choose our elliptical tool, I believe it's called, yes and we are going to copy and then we go over to our background and we paste now you notice it's a little big so you zoom out and press Control t now Control t is going to allow us to change the photo without cropping it change the size change all of that so since they're in the back we got to put them more or less to scale let's say they're right here but they're a little smaller pretty big room Let's see the right here. Here. Okay? So. Now. We are going to apply the transformation. Now let's choose our blur here. Just a simple blur tool. We're going to blur a couple of the edges that kind of seem a bit too sharp. Now what we're going to do, we're going to copy the layer. You don't want to just copy paste, you know, control C, control V, because that'll make it bigger again, then you have to change the size again. So just duplicate the layer here. We're gonna type in 40. And that's gonna automatically change it so that, well, once you move it, it's gonna change it, there we go, so that you have your kind of shadow. But it's not done yet. So, we go into adjustments, we put desaturate, it's important because you don't want it to then blow up and be like super contrasty. So then we go into curves and we bring it all the way down. And so now we press Control T again. We can rotate it. Let's squish it a bit maybe. And then we move it. Yeah, let's apply the transformation. Move it back here and then it's on top of it. So what do you do? You move the layer down. And now it's behind. And there you go, you got your shadow. Same thing we're going to do with the other. Okay, so here we have our panel with all the characters set out. But we're not done. So, first things first, I'm going to turn down this fan because I'm sure you can hear it. Now, next thing we're going to do, we have our different layers here. We're going to merge visible. Now they're all together. Now you can't move them around or anything. Layer is locked, okay? First thing we're going to do, we're going to go into our filter. We're going to go artistic and we're going to go film green. We're going to put green on one and intensity on zero. We don't want to change it too much. Just add a little bit of green. Now, we're going to go into paint daubs. From correctly, we put brush size one, sharpness two. And now, for our last one, brush strokes, accented edges. We're going to do edge width one edge brightness 25 and smoothness is going to be a 2 and there's our final panel so here we have our panel done we're going to save as we're going to go desktop panels panel 25 all right and now we're done with that panel so now we can close all of these save changes nope nope i'm going to keep them the same and we're done right now. So now we go over to our photo and graphic designer. Now I'm using this program. There's many others. There's Serif and there's other kinds. As you can see, we have the first six pages. We are going to create page number seven. So our first 
first panel we're going to put image from the file and then we're going to go panels panel 25 now you could do this with measurements I'm doing it by eye there we go it's a little bit too big here let's move it over one I don't believe that's right okay so of course you don't have to do it by eye like I just did but that that's how I do things so I'm gonna bring this in here and that six up top is right in the middle so you can kind of guide yourself with that let's make it a little bit more okay so there we go there's our first panel now if we want to put dialogue of course all I do is just copy one of these put it put our text all right let's say Optimus uh, he says uh, for something I don't know thank you for your service yeah okay so then we'll put that there we move it however we need to for example we can move the spike base let's move it down here bring the curve the other way spike position and then we can move this let's say up here right and then we move our spike position let's say like that and there you go so that is the basics, I guess, of showing you how I created this comic so far that you can see, of course, this effect. These are wind effects and playing around with opacity. Same thing here, wind effects. All of these, this is the same. Wind effects with opacity. And this also, changing colors, things like that. So, fairly basic Photoshop stuff. There's nothing like too complicated here. There's nothing too uh, difficult, I guess you could say, other than having to crop out the pictures and have them with a transparent PNG file. That can be a bit difficult sometimes. But other than that, fairly simple stuff. So if you want to create your own comic, this is a great way. Of course, you'd have to look at perspective, you'd have to look at lighting, you have to look at all of that, of course those are things that you absolutely need to focus on but those are the basic skills that you will need to practice and learn to be able to make a comic so there you go guys and I will be able to show you the comic the full comic soon the first issue will be coming out fairly soon not sure exactly where I'm gonna be uploading it yet but you will be able to see this full comic and read the full comic very very soon Anyway, guys, that is going to be it for today. I will see you in the next video. Peace.